I don't think there's any mistaking where we are right now, <laughs> according to that bear taxidermy. <laughs> Here we go. Blah. Greetings from Alaska. Interior Alaska, that is. Welcome to Fairbanks, everyone. Arden, welcome to Fairbanks. Thank you. It's pretty magical out right now. It is magical. Hello, everyone. It's Jeff here, your favorite adventure, wildlife, and nature explorer, whatever you want to call me. And today, I'm joined by none other than my dear friend, Arden Greenwood. And guess Hello. what? It's her birthday today. It is. Happy it's birthday, Arden. My golden birthday, or as I like to call my magic birthday. That's right. So for her birthday, I decided to take her on a trip to Alaska. So I am up here in Fairbanks working with a company and Travel Alaska to create a whole bunch of content about all the winter experiences you can have here, seasonal activities, that sort of thing. So I decided to make a little vlog where I get to take you around with us for a behind the scenes look at this trip because I know you guys love to be really nosy and follow along on absolutely every single detail of our trips. Yeah. So that's what this is for. So we have a yeah. fun itinerary planned. We're gonna be here for three more nights and you're gonna come with us, which is great. Oh. So who is Arden here? As you know, I always love bringing different guest stars with me on all my trips. Arden and I, we are three weeks apart in age. Uh, we were born in the same hospital. Yep. We've known each other since birth. <laughs> we have. Right. Our moms like to remind us about it too, every time they see each other. Yep, so yep. you only had three weeks without me in your I life. Know. Wow. Yeah. It was a long time. I bet, you had to wait time. for me to come, yeah. wait for me to pop. So. My birthday, as you know, is in three weeks, but for now we're gonna be celebrating Arden. I'm gonna be taking her on a little museum tour today because I know that's her number one birthday wish. <laughs> so we're wait. super excited. We woke up oh. to a winter wonderland, fresh snow. Everything's dusted in snow. We got our rental car and now we're ready to go. So let's do it. Arden loves winter. A lot of my friends, they are summer bodies. They like hiking and camping. And Arden likes to do those things too, but she thrives this time of year. I do, I hate shorts. I yeah. love layers. Yeah, love and them. so when I knew I was coming to Alaska and I needed an assistant for the project, I was like, I gotta bring Arden. She's gonna love the cold. She's gonna love the winter vibes. Who better to explore winter wonderland with than the winter queen herself? This crazy lady. Yep, so I'm that's ready. why Arden's with me. Plus she's great company and a fantastic cook. And I'm excited to have you. I know, I can't wait for like cozy cabin nights yeah. and exploring and good wine, good food. Good everything. Good nature. Good vibes. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Arden Greenwood. Ooh. All right, everyone, we have made it to the University of Alaska's Museum of the North, our first stop on this trip. And the reason why we're going here is because there's a whole vast collection of natural history and cultural artifacts in here. There's Blue Babe, and based off just that description, what do you think Blue Babe is? You know, it honestly reminds me of like, there's like a blue cow car wash yep. near us at home. That's my first instinct. Not too far off. But kind of, it yep. works. So Blue Babe is kind of like a blue cow. It's a blue mummified steppe bison that was recovered from permafrost in the Fairbanks area. I think she was discovered in 1979, if I remember correctly. Um, by some gold miners. They were digging away and boom, they found this really well-preserved steppe bison, one of the best preserved specimens from the Ice Age period. So we're gonna go check out Blue Babe. Mm -hmm. And I think she's named that because not only is she that color from being in frozen silt for so long, but because it's an ode to Paul Bunyan's blue ox. So it kind of has a double meaning name. Then there's also a suspended bowhead whale. There's a bunch of dinosaur bones. There's a lot to learn about Alaska. It's just gonna be a treasure trove in there. So let's mm -hmm. go have a look. So we got to the museum 15 minutes early. That's why I'm killing so much time by vlogging. But I thought I'd ask the question in the car. What do we know about Fairbanks? What do you know about Fairbanks before we go explore it? It's not on the coast. So we're inland. Interior Alaska. Correct. Is it like the second largest city or third? I also will chime in and say it's one of the best places in the world to see the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, which we're really hoping to see. Going alongside with what the museum's all about, there's a lot of geology and natural history in this area because there's so much permafrost, which if you don't know what that is, that's pretty much just frozen soil. Recently, with climate change and global warming, this permafrost has been melting, which has been revealing a whole treasure trove of natural history artifacts. We're just killing time. Also fact-checked, Fairbanks is the second largest city 
in oh. Alaska with 33,000 residences, oh. where Juneau is then the third at 32,240. Not far behind. There we go. There you have it. Yeah. And I know that Fairbanks started as a gold mining community. Okay, this is making sense. We're looking at more history facts. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of gold mining. The buildings shown are likely those of E.T. Barnett's trading post. Let's see that. What is this shaped like, in your opinion? Oh my gosh, it's her. Blue babe. There she is, she's iconic, blue babe. Arden, we are in the presence of a geological celebrity right now. <gasps> we there, are. There she is. Blue babe? She's beautiful. I'm actually so stoked to see her. I studied a lot about her before coming here and learned a lot of weird stories. And I learned that some of the paleontologists and researchers who helped unearth her actually tried eating some of her neck meat five years after she was excavated. Granted, this was the 80s, and I feel like nowadays that wouldn't probably fly, I probably would be curious to know what it tastes like. Like, that's some 36,000 year old aged meat. I hope they had some like fine wine to wash it down, right? Oh, they did. I read okay. about this. Their dinner party was very fancy. They Sorry. paired it with a lot of wine and a lot of vegetables. And they said, according to record, that it tasted very earthy. Blue babe tasted very earthy. That would make sense. From all the minerals <laughs> in the How salt. many years underground? <laughs> a lot of years. There you go. They think she may have died 36,000 years ago, but that's not 100% accurate. She could be up to 50,000 years old. Oh, wow. And she is so well preserved. She's all in one piece. Usually, you know, you find fragments like the bones, the whatever. But in her case, you get the whole bison all together, which is why she's so special. So beautiful. So crazy. This is what an American lion looks like. Yes, in North America, there were tons of lions roaming this continent. They are not just from Africa, y'all. And it was believed that it may have taken down Blue Bay. Sorry, I'm being a total nature nerd right now. I love it. But the reason why she's so well preserved, Arden, is because she must have cooled rapidly after her death, which prevented scavengers from consuming her remains. That would make sense. And even just bacteria and things would just naturally decompose her. Exactly, Arden. She's learning, my great yeah. student here. Trying. So she must have died frozen really quickly, which means she may have died in late fall, early winter, and then she eventually would be engulfed in silt, and that's why she's so well preserved. So this is a common practice done by miners. They pretty much power hose permafrost to break it down in order to find uh, valuable minerals. And when doing so, they have found so many fossils, so many specimens from the Ice Age period. And in Alaska, this happens everywhere, which is why it is just a treasure trove of geological discoveries. Athapaskan. Something about this photo is unsettling. About me? <laughs> no, the mosquito, the giant enlarged mosquito. Oh, hold on. What is that? Let's get this one. They have different specimens in the drawer, and then you can pull it out and you scan it, and then it gives you all your fun facts. Ugh, talk specimen to me. Look at all this macro photography too. We're in bug corner over here. As you can see behind me, there's a lot of gold. Gold played a integral part in the history of Fairbanks. That's actually why Fairbanks started. But what we just learned is that this museum here has the largest display of gold nuggets in the entire state. And there they are. There she is, folks. The largest suspended bowhead whale skeleton in the Americas. Right there in front of us. Wow. This was harvested in 1963. Another detail about this museum is that the guy at the ticket booth was telling us that the shape, the architecture, was inspired by Alaska's landscape, and a lot of the university students think it's shaped like an orca, a killer whale. I don't personally see that, and when he said it's inspired by the landscape, I'm actually not really sure what part of the landscape, maybe like ice cap mountains or like icebergs, snowdrifts? or yeah, the ribbons of the aurora borealis. Not quite sure, but it is still a very clean, sleek design, very modern architecture, cool place. Whoa. Wow. 
All right, what was your takeaway from that experience in the museum? Did you learn anything new? Of course I did. Oh my goodness, so much. I mean, obviously the step bison was the star the, of the show. I mean, yeah, coolest thing in there. We learned so much. We're we just did. Processing. I'm like, there's so much. I'm like, there was really cool wolverines. We learned, you know, more about the coastal bears versus the inland grizzlies mm -hmm. and black bears. So now we have a few hours to kill because we check into our Airbnb around 4 p.m. tonight. It is currently not even noon yet. So we're gonna grab lunch, take mm -hmm. a peek at downtown Fairbanks, maybe. Just kind of kill some time before we yeah. check in. Here we go. Come hang out with us. We've made it to downtown Fairbanks. It's time to go explore. Let's see. Birthday girl right here. Are you having a good birthday? I am. Have you ever had a birthday in Alaska? I haven't, never ever. This is a first. There was a lot of snowfall last night. So we're getting lots of winter wonderland. We're just taking a look at the river here, which right now is barely a river. Frozen. <laughs> She's frozen. Well, everyone, this is what downtown Fairbanks looks like. She's buffaling. It's a uh, kind of a quiet morning. <laughs> All right. I think the crepe place might be in first place right now. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think it should be our spot. We decided to go for crepes for Arden's birthday lunch. We found this great creperie, it's popping in here, lots of action. You can get cocktails. Servers are super sweet. Mm. Look at me, I'm like, get, get the phone out of the shot. Of course. I am stuffed. Arden's birthday lunch, <laughs> complete. Complete and yeah, definitely overstuffed. Everyone in there was super spunky and super friendly. It was so nice. Good vibes. Good vibes all around. 10 out of 10. Check out this creperie next time you're in Fairbanks, you guys. All right, we're coming up to the Moose Antler Arch, a point of interest here in Fairbanks. Interior Alaska Antler Arch. Okay. Wow. Riverside views. Fairbanks. <laughs> what are we gonna do next, Arden? I don't know, should we go to the cultural center? Should we? I don't know. Let's, have a look. Let's do it. After you. You're welcome. So what I'm gathering from this museum area is that it's all about how we've used the land of Alaska with time. That's what brought people here in the first place, right? To extrapolate the natural resources, gold, timber, wildlife, oil, oil. and gas. Uh, talks about the pipeline. So I think that's the main focus of this museum exhibit, which is uh, really informative. How'd you like your birthday date part two? It's great, absolutely thrilling. It was a short five minute walk. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about our rental car. So we are driving a Toyota RAV4. I was a little bit skeptical about renting a car in Fairbanks because I know the winter conditions could be quite harsh. In fact, we arrived during a winter snowstorm, but this car is well fitted, well suited for this environment. We have four wheel drive. We have a heated steering wheel, which is such a nice luxury. We've got heated seats. And this thing is just driving great out here. Not too big, but not too small. It's a great size. I yeah. know. So this is going to be our uh, humble abode while we explore the wilds of Alaska. Do that. It Very does. It's nicer than my car. Oh, for sure. This is from Budget Rental, by the way. Just making a little shopping list so we prepare for the next few days. You know, traveling with a personal chef is the way to go, you guys. <laughs> One time I went camping with Arden and I brought like instant meals, you know, where you put hot water, boiling hot water, and it cooks the meal in the bag. And Arden over here brought like a full Moroccan tagine. Oh my gosh, that's right, yes. That was so good. It was like a like chicken skewers and like a Moroccan couscous. And then you yeah. had a whole cocktail bar, little yeah. mini tequilas and everything. And I was like, oh my God. 
Well, I mean, if, yeah, I, it, camping's all about like the food and beverage and then nature. Right. I'm kidding. Okay, no, you like you lead the hikes and stuff, but I feel that there's nothing better than like coming from a hike and exploring to like a cozy little campground with, you know, good wine or a good cocktail and the best meal. That's just how Arden rolls, you guys. It is. So while Comfort. I was having like cup of noodles, she was having a full marinated Moroccan <laughs> tagine dinner. And ever since No more hot dogs. You're now on an the indisposable stick. friend and camping buddy. I know how to win them over. And here you are on a birthday trip to Alaska. Your plan worked. There we go. All right, guys, we're moving into our new home. This is gonna be our base camp here in Alaska. Look how cute this rustic cozy cabin is. I can't wait to check it out on the inside. I love it. And it comes with a personal shoveler. <laughs> Let's go check it out. This is our reaction video. Am I being a... <gasps> Oh, it's so cute! In a loft? <laughs> I love this Airbnb already. Our new home! I love it. It's so beautiful. And the red door. I love living in my own little Lincoln Log cabin out here in Alaska. This is the life. Places. Places, everyone. <laughs> Getting some pictures. Nice. All right, everyone. It's time to give you a little tour of our adorable rustic cozy cabin Airbnb. Are you ready? Let's go check it out. Starting with the entryway, we've got a ton of activity brochures, some books all about Alaska, some fun board games. Art and I are gonna have a fun wine night with those. And we've got some blankets to stay nice and warm. The foyer, our living space. This uh, living space has turned into my photography workshop zone. And this is our beautiful kitchen where Arden will be spending most of her time. She's yeah. deliberately choosing to cook for me. It's true. I mean, I wear the pants in any relationship I'm in, but I still like to take care of my people. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna vlog. We've got a whole coffee bar, which we are going to set up very soon because we're gonna pull an all-nighter tonight for the Aurora Borealis photography tour. As you can see, Arden's going to make some pasta. Now, let's go look at the bathroom, which is so nice. They have really thought this through. This is where that crepe you saw earlier is going to end up. <laughs> Arden being a girl boss over there. I'd say for rustic cabin, this is quite luxurious. Let's head on to the loft. The bedroom with bear and moose bedding, of course. There's Arden, girl bossing once again. It's quite snowed in, but there is a little fire pit out there. And when we checked in, we found a pile of wood ready to go if we choose to light a fire, which we might just have to do that at some point on this trip. We're hoping to see those tonight. This is going to be our Alaska base camp for the next three days. Are you excited? <laughs> Arden setting up charcuterie. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Arden in the flesh. I can't wait for the Arden cooking show spinoff. There we go. Okay, so a steaming bowl of pasta. God bless you, Arden Greenwood. <laughs> yes. Personal chef. Nope. Should we say Grace? <gasps> Grace. Amen. Well, here we are in our cute cabin, just having dinner. I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here, but this does not mean our day is over. Although the sun is setting outside, we are about to pull an all night bender going on Aurora Borealis photography tour, but I'm making a whole video just about that experience. So for today's video, that's a wrap. We just explored Fairbanks, Alaska, and I took you along with us. As we finish up on dinner, we're gonna take a quick nap and live more adventures through the night tonight. Let's hope we, we find go. them. So if you want to come with us to go Aurora Borealis chasing, stay tuned for more vlogs. And until then, subscribe to this channel for more. And I hope to see you next time. Let's do it. <laughs>